I went to an all boys high school right here in New York. And one day the French teacher quit and we assumed that his replacement would be yet another prune-faced old man cramming verb conjugations down our throat. Instead, in walked Mrs. Green. She was 25, she had a pouting lower lip like Brigitte Bardot, film star of that era, and she was very, very French. And the only reason she was Mrs. Green and not Mademoiselle be, 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 is that she was married to an American stockbroker whom we immediately hated because it became clear that her agenda for us went far beyond the French language. She wanted to actually make us French. And to that end, she would take us to French movies in the middle of the school day. And there we would sit in the dark with our jaws on the floor, as in a movie like The 400 Blows. A Frenchman would arrive home from work, sidle up behind his wife at the sink, squeeze her breasts and say, my darling, I am back. Now, our version of that in the situation comedies we watched on TV was some dad arriving home and laying his attache case on the hall table and chirping, honey, I'm home. It was very, very different. So, needless to say, we were obsessed with her. My classmates, some of them, began bringing their little brownie cameras into school and snapping pictures of her legs underneath the desk. I used to knock the cameras away, uh, partially out of chivalry, but also because I was falling in love with her. For one thing, I couldn't understand how she could prefer this dullard of a stockbroker to a young poet like myself, even though I was only 14 years old. So, the days went by, my ardor for her only deepened. But then the moment came, as we kind of knew that it had to, when she was taken away from us. She walked in one day and announced she would not be returning to teach in the fall because she was gonna have a baby. So my eyes traveled down to the little bulge in her tummy and I felt like a knife had been plunged into my heart. But the weeks went by, the months went by, the years went by, and adolescence would soon provide far greater ways to shed tears over love than a departed French teacher. And I forgot about her and I thought we all forgot about her. And then the decades went by. And a few years ago, it came time for our 40th high school reunion. And as we sat around discussing, well, will we hang crepe paper? Will we hire a DJ? Somebody said, well, why don't we try to bring back some of the old teachers? I wonder if Mr. Bamberger, the physics professor, is still alive. And I thought, yes, yes. But what if I could find Mrs. Green? So, I started looking for her. Now the school had no record at all, too much time had passed. <clears throat> so I went to the building where she had lived. Yes, I knew where she'd lived. We, we didn't call it stalking in those days, but it was probably very close to that. Unfortunately, the current doorman had no memory of her at all. He was a young guy. But then just as I was leaving, there was a change in shifts of the doorman. And the new arrival was an older gentleman who, as he pulled on the white gloves of his trade, I popped a question to, and he said, wait a minute, a French woman? And I said, yes, that's, that's right. And he said, married to somebody in the financial field? Yes. And they had a little girl, right? Well, I, yes, I think so, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. And he said, well, no, 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 I remember them. The couple split up, joy, vindication. And he said, but the girl, well, is now a woman, and actually she lives right down here, the big, the big white building on the corner of York Avenue. I knew that building. So I got a hold of her phone number, I called her up, told her what I wanted, and she told me that her mother was now in semi-retirement as a translator for the UN, 
but still shuttled occasionally back and forth between Paris and New York. And for all the daughter knew, her mom might well be here on the day of the reunion. So I raced home, I sat down, and in my very best high school French, I wrote her a letter, not an email. Mailed it off to the Paris address that the daughter had given me. And then about a week later, a letter arrived back from Paris on crinkly lavender stationery, smelling faintly of Chanel number no. five or some incredible thing. And it began, Cher Jean, bien sûr je me souviens de toi. Dear John, of course I remember you. And it went on to say that she was, in fact, going to be here around the time of the reunion, and she'd be delighted to drop in. So I practically levitated holding this thing. And my first thought, well, I, I, I'm not going to tell you my first thought, but my second thought was, who will I tell? What formerly terminally horny teenager will I drop this bombshell on? And then I thought, nobody. No, no. I'll simply walk in there with her the day of, and blow everybody's mind. So, another week went by, and another letter arrived from Paris. This one on crinklier, even more lavender stationery. I think French women may have two different levels of stationery. But this one said that she'd thought about it and decided not to come. So, I desperately read between the lines, the, the subtext, as actors say. And it dawned on me that she'd realized that her walking through the door would be a hell of a lot different than old Mr. Badberger, the physics teacher, because the last line of the letter was, rest avec tes illusions, keep your illusions. So I, I sank to the floor holding this thing immobilized, basically. But I had to somehow gather myself because now only a few days were left until the event. So I had a kind of a mini brainstorm. And I asked the daughter to stand in for her mother. And she did, and she was the belle of the ball, especially when everyone made the connection between the young woman standing before them and the little bulge in Mrs. Green's tummy all those years ago. But I alone knew how much more deeply everybody's mind could have been blown. And if I wanted to, today, I could find Mrs. Green. Even if she's no longer at that Parisian address, if she's still alive, I could Google her. I could track her down somehow. And if I did, this is what I would tell her. You were not merely an erotic object to us. You led us into the garden of sensuality far more gracefully and less clumsily than we would otherwise have gotten there. And so, so years after you left us, you made us better lovers and better men. But I'm not gonna track her down and tell her that because I understand her last instructions to me. Rest avec tes illusions. And I'm going to obey them. <laughs>